All right. Well, welcome. This is our third webinar in the series, and we are going to make sure that everybody who has come to any of these and is on our list when we're all when it's all said and done, we're going to make sure that everybody gets a link to um, you know to ones that they may have missed because we want everybody to learn as much as they can and uh, take advantage take advantage of everything. So I'm uh, very excited about that. So we've got Mike, of course. Uh, Mike is going to take it away, and uh, he'll um, introduce himself and then introduce Larry. So, Mike. All right. So, um, first of all, I just want to thank Karen. She's a rock star with this kind of stuff. I mean, and her, you know, she's a great speaker and has, knows a lot about a lot, and she's really creative, and so I want to just start out by thanking Karen. Next Wednesday... Uh, we're going to do, I'm going to do a, a workshop and, and this is something that I've done with Karen before. And when I talked about this topic, I, the response was quite frankly, it was pretty overwhelming. And I think it's because, um, you know, your audience has changed. And so if you write to how your audience was 10 or 20 years ago, you're writing to an audience that no longer exists. And the internet has totally changed the way we read. And, and I'm going to talk about what that looks like, the implications of that, what, how that affects nonfiction and fiction novels. Um, so uh, we invite you to be part of that, 6.30 next Wednesday. Um, this uh, Redeem the Lockdown series that we're doing is a service that uh, Karen and Larry and I decided to offer authors during the quarantine. So if you found these trainings helpful, um, in future weeks, please share the emails with people who you know who might be able to benefit from this. And if you're interested in learning more about how to publish your book, we'd be honored if you'd consider us. You could, again, um, contact Karen, Larry, or me. So with that said, our guest tonight um, is new to our Illumify staff. And I had a, 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 a writer's conference. Illumify does an annual writer's conference. And Larry was one of our speakers and I'm, and I'm like, I just want to hang out with Larry all the time. I, I just was bugging him. So finally, he agreed that he would work with us. But, but Larry, what I love about Larry, he worked with Macmillan Publishing for about 30 years. And he was a bookstore rep. He was working with, the, with Macmillan, getting their books into bookstores. Um, but then after he left Macmillan, he went to work with a local bookstore and was on the other end as a, he was selecting the books that – they, they uh, allow into the bookstore. In fact, there's a person in attendance in our meeting night who told me yesterday that she had to work with Larry to try to get her book into the bookstore he was working at. And, and he was a tough sell. And, and I told that to Larry today and he just shook his head. Yep. But, but the other thing about Larry too, is that he's had a part in discovering and advancing the careers of authors who have been best-selling authors, uh, Brennan Sanderson, uh, Kim Fergus and Paul at Et Etkater. I've actually met Paul through through Larry. So anyway, Larry, I'm so happy that you're here. So welcome to uh, tonight. Thank you. I, I enjoy this position. I enjoy good. working with this company. Okay, good. So so I want to start out by asking you a question. Is it harder or easier today to get for authors to get their books into bookstores? So that's a good question. It is no easier. Whether it's harder or not is hard to say because – uh, the traditional route of um, books being published by traditional publishers and being repped in existed in kind of a, a singular manner until just a couple decades ago. And the only kind of publishing available to independent authors was what was called the vanity press. And they were just simply looked down on. Bookstores didn't want to deal with it. So you got a different environment. And it's, it's, it's no easier to get your book in, but I don't think it's any harder to get your book in. Okay. You're just against much greater competition per title. Okay. And, and, and as you as an author, when you're thinking about going into the bookstore, you have to realize the bookstore will have approximately 6,000 titles a month to choose from. That's your competition. So, so, why don't you explain now in you brand bookstore, a bookstore, how can you explain how do bookstores make a profit? Okay. So that's real simple. Bookstores make a profit by selling the product. That is the book. 
And it's much like a grocery business. It's a cash flow business. And you have to have regular cash flow because let's think of it this way. We buy the book, then we put it on a shelf and we have to rent that shelf space to ourselves until the book sells. And so if the book that you bring doesn't sell in a sufficient time, that placing it on the shelf becomes an enlarged debt. Not only do you have the debt to pay to the publisher, the author, you have the debt to pay to yourself in uh, staff, electricity, insurance, and all that sort of stuff. So bookstores only make a profit when they sell a product to their customer. And that's one of the books, the reasons bookstores have to pay attention to the profile of their customer. And the profile while being general is very specific. Right. Well, and I, I you know, and I'm thinking too about the mathematics yep. um, because, you know, you know, and I was a writer, I uh, started professionally writing in 1997. I didn't start understanding bookstores into the last few years, but bookstores, you know, they sell the book for about 50% of, of the retail price. Uh, they get like a 50, what is it, a 53%. Yeah. So, so right now the standard without the specials, and there's always specials going on, is a, a book, uh, when you buy a, 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 a book from major publisher at 46% discount, free freight, and free return. Right, right. And then there's always something else going on. Buy three, you get 53%, or this book is being offered at 50 or whatever. Right. So they purchase those books. So, right. so when, when you walk into a bookstore with 6,000 books, that bookstore owner has purchased all of those books at a discount, but still, that's a lot of money they've invested. That's a lot of books. money. The, and the last bookstore I worked at, my inventory was, there was a minimum of 38,000 titles in the store. And we were what would be known as a, a medium-sized independent bookstore. So how much That's money? That's a lot was, of money. How much money was invested in that inventory? Oh my gosh, it would be hard to know without looking at it. But I know that if we didn't do seven thousand dollars a day, we were falling behind. Okay. All right. So, and and I wanted that as a backdrop before we jump into the deep end of the pool. So, how do authors get their books into bookstores? Okay, so number one, you've got to make a presentation. You've got to get before the right person and tell them what your book's about and see if they want to buy it. So that means you've got to know your product, which is your book. You've got to know the store. And every store is going to have certain things in general, but every store has its own personality and its customer profile. You have to know your business. You are in the book business. When you go out to offer a book, they need to know what discount you're offering, and you need to know what discount you're offering. They need to know about reorder. They need to know about return if you do return. If you don't do return, your discount better be 55% or more, because if it can't be returned, we have to keep dropping that price to try to move it out on a clearance table before we throw it into the fire. And sometimes we come out better throwing things into the fire. Um, so that's, those are the three big things. You got to know your product. You got to know the store. You have to know yourself. And one of the things you authors have to accept, and I don't care if you're doing a traditional publisher or doing any form of self-publishing, the world of book business has changed. You don't have the luxury of just writing and someone else selling unless you're, you know, Stephen King or somebody at that level. Even the major publishers are only going to put X number of dollars in their best books, and then they're going to say to you, you need to get out and try to make bookstores, try to make uh, Amazon, try to make anyone interested. So you're in the book business, and you have to start thinking about yourself as an ambassador for the product which you're selling. In most people's cases, that's their book. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good, good. So, so, you know, and let's get even more specific, um, you know, like, like, uh, readers copies. Tell us about, about readers copies. Yeah. So readers copy is what you give to the bookstore. I was looking around to see if I had a galley on hand. I don't have it. 
So this is a galley. And this is what bookstores are given by all the traditional publishers. It's a galley, as you see, cannot be sold. Uh, and not every book that's printing gets a galley. That's very important. But if it does, when I'm done talking to a book person, I'm saying, here, here's your reader copy for you or one of the people at your staff to read. No charge. If you're going to get your book into the competition, you better be prepared to say, here's your reader's copy. And that's, that's just a business expense that you have to get in. Now, will that be read by the buyer? Sometimes. Will it be read by someone on the staff? Sometimes. Will it be totally ignored? Sometimes. But if you don't offer the book so that the content can be known by the staff to sell it, if you don't offer the book to the buyer, it comes across as you're not willing to get behind your own book. So why should I? The, the reader's copy is an exceptional, uh, exceptionally important item to promote your book. And that goes along with, let me say, when, you, when you're going in to sell the book, you have to know more about your book than as a writer. Because you've read your book as a writer, you've got to find a way to read your book as a reader so that you can talk to the buyer about, here's how I think this book will be read. Right. So, so you got to know your audience. Know your audience. Um, who your reading audience is. Uh, you want to make sure that the bookstore sells to your audience. Absolutely. If you've got a science fiction book, let's say, and you go into a bookstore that just doesn't sell science fiction, you're wasting your time and theirs. Well, and I think, too, about the bookstore that you have worked at, um, they specialize in children's uh, books. So, you know. yeah, they are, they are well-known nationally from birth to the third grade and then sixth through high school. But our second highest section that we sold out of was adults. And that, you know, that is not even in the public consciousness. But we at the bookstore knew we had to have really good adult books that had to be, uh, had to be known by the sales staff. I, I read just about everything that went in there. Right, right. Um, tell us more about bookstores and and just selecting the right stores, how you approach them. Okay, um, so so you've got some books. First of all, you're not going to be able to get to every bookstore. You start out with what I say concentric circles. These are the bookstores that are close to the, that you can get to without undue expenses or undue time. Then you move out, then you move out, then you move out, and you'll finally get to a point that unless you're taking a vacation and traveling to an area, there's only so much you can do personal contact. And personal contact is great. I'll talk about a representative you might want to use uh, later. But uh, you, you, you've got to know the store. One of the best things that you can do is look on the internet and see how the store describes itself. That didn't used to be available. That's available. And then, even if you have an appointment and you've never been in the store, go early so you can walk around. Walk in and say, I'm here for an appointment with so-and-so at such and such time, but I just want to walk around. The staff will be glad to have you around. And that gives you a sense of the personality and the sense of the type of books that sold. And you can even ask staff, what kind of books do you really sell? Uh, and, and then you need to, to be very honest when you sit down. I have this title. I have written it for thus and such reason. Here's what the book is about. And I don't mean an elevator speech. I mean, this is what is the main point of the book. This is the reason I wrote the book. This is what I'm trying to say. Three sentences will do it to see if you get a response. So you, you have, you have to, locate your book within the perimeters of what the bookstore sells because they don't have the money. They don't have the money to just take a flyer. Well, we've never sold a travel book, but I'll take a flyer on this one. They don't have the money to do that anymore. Right. Right. And um, so, you, you know, it, it's just a matter of doing your homework. Is it easier to get a book into chains or into independent stores? Usually it's, usually it's easier to get them into an independent store. That is not to say the chains do not want it, because I used to deal with 
with with Barnes and Nobles. And Barnes and Nobles has a, has a general policy for the country of you can pick up local authors. That doesn't mean they will. That means they they can listen to you. The local independent bookstore is going to listen with more of an active voice, and here's why. You're going to say, I, in Denver, I am from Denver, I know people in Denver, I'm going to put it on my Facebook or whatever, whatever platform you're using, and that local independent bookstore immediately thinks of the people within the geographical area that can get them to buy the book. And that's, you know, it's foot traffic. Most stores depend on foot traffic. You don't sell anything if nobody comes in the store. Right. So, you know, and, and, and part of this is if we realize that these bookstores are businesses, if they can tell, if they think that we're going to be able to bring in traffic, yeah. they will stock your book because it's going to bring in business. That's, that's, that's right. And that's part of what you've got to say. When, when you're doing that look around, you need to look around and notice the categories. You know, do they have adults? Do they have kids? Do they have children? Do they have reference? You, all that stuff will be marked. And you need to be able to help locate your book in one of those categories because you, you could very easily hear, hear a buyer. I've done this a thousand times. I like that book. I just don't know where to put it. It doesn't make any sense. And that's one of the things that I think you need to, if you don't have it on your book cover, you need to be able to say, I can see this book in such and such section. And that will help the book buyer become more inclined to your book? Because that's a huge question. Where do I put this? Right. Um, so how about giving us, walk us through the process. You, 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 there's a local bookstore or there's a Barnes and Noble you want to get your book into. Yeah. What is the process? So nuts and bolts of what a person needs okay, to Okay. So one of the worst things that takes place uh, somebody walks in and says, I'm passing through or I'm here and I want to sell you a book. And they expect me as the buyer to drop everything that I'm doing to listen to their pitch. People, it's not how it works. Nobody is waiting for you to come in. So you do the common ordinary courtesy of you find out, you know, walk in and ask, who should I talk to, whatever. You know, I, I've been called out many times. Can you come out and talk to? And I'll say hello. And if I've got time, we'll sit down and talk. But if not, I'll say to that person, let's set up an appointment. So set up an appointment. You can call them. You can email them. You can write them. You can walk in, say, I've written a book. I'd like to try to tell you about it to, to see if you would like to carry it. You don't say, so you can carry it. You always want to always want to uh, shake your head towards the buyer's decision. Now you're not trying to take it away from it. So you make an appointment, you show up on time. No question, you show up on time. Try to get there a little early, they will give you a few minutes. And here, here's what I, uh, you know, I, I help train book reps for my companies and other. So here's the way it works. You got about 60 seconds to get interest for another 60 seconds to get interest for five minutes. And if you don't capture an interest by then, it's done. And you, you, you need to be prepared to answer objections if you can, but you need to be courteous, always courteous. You need to have a sense of humility. I can tell you, I can, the, the staff and other people, often calling, hey, Larry, come on out of here. Here's a person who says they've written a book to save the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, a little bit of humility here, folks. So I have written this book. I remember one author, a um, number of years came in, and she wrote about uh, European soccer. And, uh, and she's the only author I ever knew wrote. I have ever known that walked in and said, you know, this is a pretty good book. It's a mid-list book. It's not going to, it's not going to make a great profit. She's also the only author. I said, I'll take five immediately just because of her honesty. <laughs> so you need to be honest. This is what my, the genre of my book's in. This is the main point. Thank you very much for hearing me out. If you're interested, 
here is the business deal. You need to know what you can sell that book for uh, in terms of profit. You need to yourself. You need to know what discounts you can get. You need to know how it's going to be restocked. Uh, you need to know, you know, if you do returns, they need to know it. But returns is hard to do when you're an independent publisher. So you get that initial discount as low as you can go. And as I say, you, you follow the rules of courtesy. Here's some things you don't do. Um, and, and, you know, what I'm telling you now comes from conversations I've had with buyers over the years and uh, staff people over the years. And we just laugh about these things. You, you, you don't say, no, you're wrong. You can sell this book. You don't know your customer base. I do. You're dead. You're dead in the water. You don't say, this is the best book that's ever been written on the subject. Nobody believes that. What you do is you are positive about the elements in the book that you are positive about. This is a book where I have attempted to show what magic means to fifth and sixth graders. All right? This is the book that, uh, that deals with a forgotten part of history that I feel needs to be known. All right? So you appeal to the content, you are courteous in doing, you offer the book, you are courteous if they say no. Here's how you can get in touch with me if you change your mind. And that happens, that happens. So did I, did I answer the question you were oh, that's great. asking? That's really yeah. good okay. Um, so how often do, do bookstores sell books on consignment? So it depends. I. I never sold a book on consignment. Now this, and there are other bookstores here in town that that's all they do. Here's my reason. I think bookstores and authors are in it together. If you, if I take a consignment book in, then the only time you get paid is when that book passes through the cash register. Now, if that book gets damaged under my care, it doesn't matter because it didn't go the, through the cash register and you have to go get it. It's also expensive in setting the computer up. It's expensive in getting them back out. Uh, too many times authors think if I don't pick up the book, it'll stay there and it eventually will sell, forgetting that we take it off the shelf and put it in a box and after two months it's gone. Um, so consignment, where the bookstore wants to do consignment, you have no choice. If you have a choice to sell the book, it's going to be economically better for you and for the store. Uh, let's talk about Barnes and Noble. Okay. Uh, they're this, they're, they're the last big chain, at least here in our area. Um, how does, how, and we've talked about this before, Larry, how does a, an author get their book into Barnes and Noble? So you go in, you go to one of the information desks. They always have a couple around. You say, I am a local author. I have written a book on, its title is, I would like to make a presentation to your local book buyer. They will tell you if that person is receiving books to, for, for consideration. If they do, then you set up an appointment and you just go through the same process that I've talked about. It's the same. It's all about getting the appointment. Now, didn't you say, you said something to me, Larry, that uh, to get your book into Barnes & Noble, how many managers have to approve it or how many bookstores? Oh, so you can get it into your local bookstore um, if the manager of that local bookstore says, okay, I'll take it for X number of time and a small number. But if you want it in Barnes and Noble beyond that local bookstore, you'll go through four different regional managers before that's approved. And that's not going to be improved on, uh, on, unless you so, show immediate big sales in, in the local store. And it's not that they, it's not that they have anything against independent writers. They, they have, they have everything for a statistical sales proof. Right. Right. Cause you must remember I'm, I'm a, a local, I'm, I'm a local buyer, local bookstore, medium size, which means I buy, you know, books in fairly large quantities to one at a time. 
they don't do that. When they're doing anything above the local bookstore or regional, they're doing 20, 30, 40, 100 copies. And that's money. So if you haven't shown on local statistics that you can, in a, in a period of time, two weeks, sell a, a significant number of books, you, your chances of getting it into a regional bookstore, a district bookstore, and then larger, are virtually zero. Now, sometimes because you sell a whole lot on Amazon, the chains will then say, okay, let me hear something about it. Now, what about this? Um, let's say you're an author, you're independently published, you want to have a book signing. Maybe yeah. you want to use the book signing as a way to get into the bookstore. Uh, is, that a good, is that a good strategy? So, it's not a bad strategy. Let me tell you the negatives, let me deal with the reality. Book signings are a dime a dozen. What you, what you, you never want to demand one. You want to always offer your services. You know, if it helps you sell this book, I am glad to come in and do a signing. But you say, I'm glad to do any of that. They may not want you to do a signing. They may want you to hang around on a Saturday and just talk to people about your book. Because, um, Signings are usually not well intended if you're not a big name. People can see you sitting at the desk and they will go out of their way to get around you so that they don't have to do the uncourteous thing of turning you down and saying no. In fact, when I set signings up at the bookies, I would rearrange the traffic flow so everybody had to go past you. <laughs> and it was very depressing, you know. So you think, and I've often said this, I, I've heard it over and over, and if I have a signing here, there's going to be 300 people show up. Now let's be realistic, 30 people show up. Now let's really figure out how many will probably be there, five. They're scary. They are scary to pull off. Um, so Martha Cruz asked, does Barnes & Noble require that you have a, a professional distributor in order to stock your book? No. It's all going to be the person you talk to and the practice they have adopted for their local book. And you're, you're going in and not only are you making a presentation about your book compared to all the other books that are coming out, you're making a presentation compared on how that store has had success with local independent authors. If the success rate has been horrible, that's the atmosphere you're in. That's why you don't ask for uh, if you bring this, if you buy this book, then let's set up a signing right now. No, you say, if you buy this book, I am willing to help you in any way possible, including a signing or any event that you wish. Then you go on to say, and this is really big. I am, if, if this book, if my book is in your store, I am going to make sure that that is on my blog, my face mail, whatever you do to communicate to other people. And that means a whole lot. So can you tell us some success stories of authors, local authors who come to you, they did everything right, and they sold books? Okay, so one of my favorite success stories is Paul Ackiter. Paul Ackiter is uh, uh, just a genius at writing middle grade fiction, and his sales have proven it. He has done so much business and made so much money as an independent author. He lo would lose money by, by being uh, picked up by a traditional publisher. So. Paul comes into me one day and he says, I've heard about you. Would you read this book and tell me what's wrong? Because it's been turned down for two years. I read the book. I knew why it had been turned down. I told him it was all about politics. And I, and I said, we've got to, first of all, we've got to get a stack in here. I've got to have five books for my staff to read. And then you have to be available. So Paul would come in on Saturdays and hang around the back and not just promote his book, but any book. And his personality made people want to be around him. And then the sale started. And then he started speaking to groups outside of the bookstore, and the sales increased. One of the best ways your book will be promoted is when somebody reads it, likes it, and tells someone else. And that's what happened. So that, that's, that's it. I, I probably sold myself of his first book, uh, uh, a, a book for fifth graders, uh, I think nine ninety nine, I believe, was what the price when it started. 
I probably sold four or five hundred myself, just me. Well, so and you, you pay attention to the staff when you go in there. You don't want to just be friends with the book buyer. You want everybody to like you. Hey, let's sell this book for Paul's sake. Right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Paul published his book through Amazon. He, he I don't think he, he, yeah. He, I mean, it was, it was an Amazon released book. So, but his first, his first time he did it all himself and learned that wasn't a good thing to do and actually had it printed in the Philippines and he, and he had to buy like a room full at a time. Uh, so it all worked out, which is not a good way to, uh, not a good way to be a first time author. <laughs> so, so David Hawk asked, and, and if you have more questions, please uh, put them in the chat box because this is a good time to start asking questions. If your book is, this is from David Hawk, if your book is only self-published on Amazon, what is the process to get physical copies to the local bookstore? That's going to be you. That means you're going to have to, you're going to have to get your book on Ingram, which is the bookstore, you know, if you, if you um, go to a bookstore, the first thing they're going to sit around, turn around the computer, blah, 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 blah. they're going to Ingram Distribution, the number one distributor in America, and they're going to see if they can get it from Ingram at a decent discount. And you want to tell Ingram always 53, 55% discount, which usually comes out to 40, 44 to, uh, to the bookstore. They get free freight and they get returns that way. So you, you, you've got, you've got, got to get your book. I don't care Amazon or web. Second thing is you, you have to buy a sufficient amount and you have to become your own distributor. And it's, it's like you may have your garage held up by books or your back seat may be full of nothing but books in your car. But, you know, if you buy one of these, I'll go right out and bring three of them in. You need four more, call me, I'll get them to you. So um, I, I hope that answers the question. It's all, it's all your action as a book businessman, not as an author. So, so one of the things that, that we deal with our authors um, we, we publish their book on their own Ingram Spark account, which is Ingram owns the world's largest printing company. It's called um, Lightning Source. And they own Ingram Content Group, which is the world's largest book distribution company. But, but what an author can do on their account is if they order 750 or more copies, the, it, it reduces their cost per book by a third. I, I did that with an author today on the phone, and he could not believe it. So let's say you have a book that's $16.99 and it costs you $5 a copy to print it. So, so the, the retailer pays you about eight bucks for the book. And then you've got, you know, and you're, you, you make about $3 a book. You bring it down by a third and you're paying $3 a book. Now you've increased your profit per book up to $5 a copy. So, so, um, if you're going to go the route of trying to get into bookstores, you got to, my opinion is you need to go in all the way. You do a, an order of 750 books or more. You print them up on Ingram Spark and you get an incredible discount. And then your, your profits are going to be higher. Incidentally, Amazon partly prints some, a lot of their books on Ingram's, on, on yeah, Lightning Source right. printers. That's right. Um, because they're that big. They, they actually are able to compete with Amazon. So yeah. Um, but anyway, I think that's a, a really um, a good way to, to build your profit margin because if you can if you can sell those 750 books or a thousand books, well now you're starting to make some money on your books. So, and even if you can't do that, and I agree, that's a wonderful way. But it, you know, you're struggling with finances. You're doing this book on the first. You can't afford 750. You 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 get what you can to get out. And you buy maybe a hundred books just for you to keep, but then you get the rest of them on Ingram and you'll get less per book, but you can then reorder. I need 25 more books sent to XYZ bookstore and they'll send them. You'll get less profit than having those books around, but it can be done. And, and, and sometimes that's how you have to start small to build your name and to build your title. So it, it you know, there's trade-offs all the way through. Nothing but trade-offs. Um, uh, another question from Martha Cruz. Does Lightning Source print illustrated books? Also, can you talk more about Ingram? Yeah. 
The answer is yes. <laughs> That's it. The answer is yes. Work with your publisher for prices. You got to have good illustration. There's all sorts of things. When you're doing illustrated books, one of the extra costs is color separation. For those of you who don't know that, that means uh, all the primary colors have to be sort of printed differently and then melded together. So you do these color separations so you get true colors and good print. Right? And that's, that's an expense, but it's an expense that you just have to do it. But yes, now Ingram. Ingram is the place on the computer where bookstores go to get books. We don't go to Amazon. You think we're gonna spend money with our competitor? No. So we're going to Ingrams. There used to be other distributors. There still are some small ones. But that uh, on your computer, you're automatically going to go to Ingrams, and then your cascade is minor, minor distributors. So Ingram is going to pretty much have every book that's in print on its computer screen. And on that computer screen, I'm going to find out. Let's say, let me pull a book here. Uh, let me pull a book right here. Uh, Coaching for performance. So uh, it's going to have coaching performance on the screen. It's going to tell me who, what, where, and when, how to get it, when it's printed. It's going to give me the cost to me. And it's going to have the retail, and then it's going to give the discount, and that's the cost to me. It's going to tell me when I can have that book in my store. All right? So this is exceedingly important. Ingram has reps that go around. But basically, the books that Ingram gets are first rep to them by the publishers beforehand. And that's what you need to know. Your, your books, you know, your, people, people are buying books now for Christmas. So you have to also know when you think your book's going to sell. If you've got something built around a holiday, you better try to get it in the store four to six months early. Or the money spent for it. I, there's been many a times when I, I've spent all my money for, for Christmas and Hanukkah and somebody comes in with a good book and I've had to say, I have no budget left for it. See me next year. And that, that's a, a very deflating thing, I know. So um, let, me, let me say something about, uh, about representing your book. Nothing beats the book being represented in, like conversation because the conversation can go back and forth. You can see the eyes. You can see everything. You're only going to be able to go to so many places. You might have someone that you really trust in California that go into, can go into the local store and knows exactly what your book is about, knows all the business details, and can say, um, here's a copy of the book. If you'd like to buy it, it's available on Ingram, uh, or I can get it for you personally. But this person has to adopt the business sense. I can tell you the worst person to ask to ask to go in to sell your book because it's usually a disaster. That's your mother. And I, I've heard it all my life. My daughter wrote the best book in the world. You got to have it. Well, tell me about it. I've got five of those books sitting on the shelf. Tell me what's unique about it. Well, my daughter did it. Bad business. Um. Let me let me circle back and and sort of the thing about lightning source and color printing. Sure. So when a person has their own account with lightning source, um, and and you upload your files um, on lightning source, you have two options that you hit. You hit either color or black and white. Now the problem is, you, if you have three color images in the book, lightning source or or Ingram Spark will count every page as being color. And so um, it's gonna it, it it'll boost the cost of your book to print by a third At least to a half. Yeah. So so that's why you know and and actually I, I'm I can see one of our authors on right now who did a a a, a book and she wanted color printing and that was great. It's just a little pricier. Um, mm. But but uh, but just take that into an account. The, the way to get around that, rather than working through Lightning Source. And, and again, I love Lightning Source. They, I have become a huge fan of them because they're a high quality printer. They can give you the, the best competitive deals, but the color printing doesn't work as well. So if, if, you, if you're committed to be doing color printing, then you've got to go through 
you're better off going through an offset printer. Where that's, that's like your traditional printer that does a print run of books. And then you're just paying for the color pages that right. they're printing. Right. Um, but then that challenge is like how do you sell on Amazon? You know, we had an author who, who wanted to do a, a full color children's book. They had to build their own company, start their own company and stock their book. They had to ship books to Amazon's warehouse and then they had to pay for a pallet where the book sits and a fulfillment <laughs> fee. And it's just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hassle. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm, I, I try to talk authors out unless I, I think the best way to make a color print book work is when it's shorter, short children's books, right. uh, uh, Sheree, uh, you're out there. We did your book on uh, poetry yeah. and it didn't have as many pages. So we were able to still price it competitively, but if it's going to be a long book, you're, you're pricing yourselves out of the market. My, my approach is don't ever, you don't ever want to try to sell your book for more than 1999 because people, there's this metal barrier. If they don't know who you are, they're not going to shell out 2199. Right. They may shell out 1999, but that $20 barrier is significant enough that you want to do everything you can to keep your retail price below that. And so, let, let me reaffirm that from the buyer and book sell, local bookstore seller position, not, not my work as a rep. Over and over, I've seen independent authors come in with a good book. I'm not saying it wasn't bad, but they have priced it at the current price of a well-known author. So you're, you're selling Jim Fergus for $30. Jim Fergus books are always number one in France, number two in Germany, number three in Italy, before they even appear in the United States. Yours isn't like that. Do not compare the value that the end purchaser, the reader, places on your work to the value placed on an established writer. Is it unfair? It may be more than unfair. Is it the way that it is? It is. You know? Right. And, and there's something else I wanted to say about your, your conversation with the buyer. There's a couple things that you need to do. You always want to thank them whether they purchased your book or not, you want to thank them for the time and leave something that they can get in contact with you because minds do change. Needs do change. You always want to leave. You do not want to argue with them on their store. That is the worst. And I see it over and over and over. And you have to accept the fact that just because you sold one book at a store and now you're doing another book and it's a different topic, doesn't mean they're going to treat you like, like the previous book. So we have a guy comes in, he does a wonderful book on um, golf courses around the world. That's one, of, that's one of the few sports books that you can sell pretty much anywhere is golf. Uh, not my idea of a great day, but yeah, you know, that's the way it is. So it comes in his next book is the history of route 36. Now I, I'm fascinated by the history of route 36 and 66. The person who bought a golf book is probably not as fascinated by the history of Route 36. And for that person, when I say, well, because you've been in here, I, let, me, let me take two to see what's going to happen. And then that person tries to tell me I'm a fool for buying, not buying 50. What's his chances of getting beyond two? You don't want to argue. They know the store better than you do. Right. I, I keep coming to this in various angles. So you thank people for their time. You leave something so they can get in contact with you. Now, you sell a book in. Here's something you don't want to do. And, 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 and you have to walk the line on this. And this is all attitude. So it's okay to call the bookstore up and say, I just wonder if you need to do a restock three months. You don't do that by going, okay, it's three months and you haven't bought them enough. You don't do that. You make the offer and you make it in an acceptable, polite manner. All right. I got a few other questions here. Uh, this is from Connie Atkins. Um, if you have a traditional publisher, should you go ahead and try to get in Barnes and Noble or is that what the publisher does? That's what the publisher does. So That's all publishers have a sales force. I was on Salesforce for many, many years. Absolutely love the job. I won't kid you. I just absolutely love the job. And 
the traditional publisher will meet with its sales force three times a year. And you'll walk out with what's known as your pub publisher bag, or you'll walk out with a bunch of titles that the publisher is printing uh, for that period of time, essentially the catalog. You have learned about these titles, you know certain ones that they really want. Then we go to all these outlets on, on a scheduled basis and present that catalog. Now, sometimes we don't present everything because it's just useless. Most of the time we try to present as much as we can. Sometimes we take longer, sometimes we take less. But the, the traditional publisher has this sales force. That does not mean that after your book is out, you cannot go into Barnes and Nobles. You cannot go into a local store and promote your book because you can't, but you use a different language. Um, my book was just put out by Simon uh, last month. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it. Uh, can I interest you in a copy? Is there anything I can do to help you sell it? It's all, what can I do to help you? That's good. Um, uh, Tim Cohen asked about Baker and Taylor. Baker and Taylor is no longer a general bookstore distributor. They ceased that months ago. They're pretty much just the schools and libraries now. Okay. It's a shame because I used to like working with them. Yeah, well, it just means there's less competition in the book distribution level. That's right. That's right. And they just so, couldn't handle it, you know. Right. Ingrid's became so big. Okay. Uh, Penny Carlovato asked, uh, what is the procedure for getting your book into Costco? It's a whole different ball game. So Costco and uh, um, Amazon have publisher buyers that deal, publisher reps that just deal with those accounts. Your, your publisher, if you're doing traditional, has selected your book to try to be purchased in. All right. You as an independent author are going to have a lot of problems. You can go to a local Costco and see if they accept local, locally published books for sale. 99% of the time it will be no. Because you know how they buy. They buy in big, big lots and very small selections. You have a better chance of getting your book into a Costco um, if it suddenly takes off and somebody hears about it, but it's virtually, it, you know, there are just so many guard gates to get past that, you know, I, I wish I could be encouraging. Well, and, and there's, their inventory of books is so small. It's so, right. you know, and, and Costco, what they're really good at is buying in bulk. So they get the price lower per book and then selling all those books. That's right. Um, you know, what, one idea, I, I have a, a friend, and she wrote a cookbook. It was a full-color cookbook. She and two other friends, uh, they, they pup printed it through a, a offset printer. And they went to the King Supers chain here in the Denver area, which if you're from Denver, everybody shops at King Supers. Uh, it's owned by Kroger. And she was able to get their rep, uh, their book rep, to stock the book in all the grocery stores. That's right. She sold 40,000 copies of her book. Yeah. 40,000 for a self-published self book. So it's just, you know, it's helpful to think about, you know, Costco, I think, is going to be about the hardest place to get your book into. But, but maybe there's other retail establishments that might stock your book. You know, I've, I've talked to one guy who wants to write a golfing book. He wants to stock them in, in golf shops. That's a great idea, and great that would idea. be some, something I would think. You, as, mm -hmm. as a book person with your product, have to use every avenue that's available to you. You are limited in those avenues only by your imagination. So, so I've got a few other um, questions I want to make sure that we hit. Uh, first of all, somebody, uh, Tim Cohen asks, is Spring Arbor still around? I haven't. I haven't seen it for years. I, well, I know what happened to Spring Arbor. They got bought out by Ingram. Okay. And, and so um, Ingram actually has a catalog that goes to bookstores and libraries called Christian Advance. And I think that is, uh, that, that used to be Spring Arbor's catalog. Okay. 
Um, and in Ingram also has its its own publishing service now. Ingram Publishing Services with its own sales reps. So it it's it's a world's largest distributor, but it also has a publishing arm. Somebody asked a question on there. How do I get my book into other countries? That's very very difficult. So I happen I happen to be friends with international writers. And I happen to know uh, almost all the famous international writers have different publishers in different countries with their contacts. And so, it, you know, I wish I could be helpful. Now, sometimes through Amazon, they will list it in Amazon England, they will list it in Amazon France. It depends on the language you're in where it has a chance of going. It is very difficult. You will have to make contact with some establishment in the other, in another country. Right. Well, it, and it is hard. And Melanie Crane, I saw us in on this call and we, we've been trying to get into, into Greece and Europe and it has been, it's been it's hard. hard. Really, really hard. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, other questions about um, if you have a publisher that is selling it to bookstores, can you still offer to other bookstores or does it, is it dependent on the publisher? So it, it depends on what kind of publisher you've got and what your contract is. If you, let's say you're with Simon and Simon has said, uh, we're going to handle all the sales and distributions and we don't want you to do thus and thus and thus. You're bound by it. You might have one that says, we're going to handle all this, but you're free to try to get it in. You can. If you are independently publishing your book, you're an independent author, you, you've you been set up in the book business, you have your product, you're free to go to anywhere. Anywhere, anytime, and see what you can do. Um, Adelaide Russell asked, how would you get your book into Walmart? Would it be similar to Kroger slash King Supers? So, um, again, Walmart's very hard. If you look... They have few books and they have certain genres that they sell in. If you're a romance writer, by the way, Walmart is still one of the best places to put a, a paperback romance. And, and and I'm not I'm not being discriminatory at all. It's just that that is really big item with their with their readers. You start again with your local place and you want to ask if you can talk to an assistant manager or someone about getting your book in. If the store says no, then you're done. Go to another one. If they say yes, you see what can happen. You know, I wish I could be more uh, positive of if you do this, then that. But but it isn't. Yes, I hear that. <laughs> that was my dog. Somebody's, somebody's walking their dog close to my house. Um, hey, uh, Tim Cohen asked, he said, uh, as a best-selling author, I'd like to offer my two cents on selling a book. So, and so, Tim, if you want to unmute yourself, why don't you just do so. uh, share a little bit about what you've learned? So can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, great. So one of the best ways, if you've got a title or um, particularly a book that you believe would appeal to a significant audience if they simply knew that it existed and was available uh, to generate interest and sales through bookstores is to try to set up interviews with radio hosts. They love to have new and interesting topics and uh, they're always looking for people in that regard and particularly if it's a book that they too would be interested in. And then you direct the audience, uh, often through question and answer or through the host, to go into the local bookstore and request your book. And to tell the local bookstore that they can get it from publishers can also uh, ultimately encourage distributors like Ingram to decide to pick it up. So that's a way to avoid some of the footwork of trying to accomplish it through multiple local bookstores. And in fact, I was successful doing that, getting my books into Barnes and Noble and other chains. That's great. And yeah, let me, let me, let me support everything you said. And there's certain kind of books that radio people really like. They love psychology, anything with psychology, anything with sociology, and they love historical fictions. 
Uh, they like Bible prophecy, too, and current events. If and you're stuff. on a radio station that deals with that. I'm talking about yeah. the general market. Yeah. Sure, sure. And, and, and you are 100% correct things. in speaking to a certain population. Yeah. 100%. That's great. Um, one last question. Somebody asked about uh, getting books into libraries. Do you have any thoughts about that? Library is a different market. Totally different market. All your major publishers will have a different sales staff for libraries. That's how different it is. All right. But you can do the same thing and you can do the same thing that Tim talked about. Get it on a radio and that that will help you get it in libraries or newspapers or anything. But you, you, you always begin by going into your local library and you ask who is the appropriate person to talk to and you go from there. That's great. All right, so we're coming toward the end. Um, so I, I just wanted to give you uh, some of the contact information. Larry knows so much about, especially that distribution part and getting into bookstores that, I mean, he's, he, I've learned so much from him. So just a reminder that we're gonna post these training sessions on our YouTube channel. It'll be open to everybody and we will, once we get all these things up, then we'll shoot you an email so that you can view it at a later time. So, and I also want to mention, do a, a plug for Word Ninjas, which is Karen's outfit. And Karen designs so many great tools, so many, anybody who's on that's a part of it, Word Ninjas will vouch that, that she gives you some great tools. So if you're interested, go check them out, wordninjas.com slash VIP. And then my contact information, Larry's and Karen's is on the left-hand side. And we would love for you to to call us or contact us if you have questions. We'd love to be a help to you and help, uh, help you get your, um, your book published and sold. Because, um, you know, at, at Illumify, our, our tagline is write, market, publish, sell. You write, but then marketing comes even before you publish because you've got to start thinking about these things before your book is done. If you wait to market your book until after the book is released, you've lost your opportunity. So anyway, so we offer different types of services, but um, so anyway, with that said, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And next week, again, it'll be how the internet has changed. We read and how writers need to adjust to their new audience. And, and I, think, I think even more so after the coronavirus thing, people are so used to reading online. They're on their computers. It's going to change things even more. Um, it, it's more, it's going to accelerate this new way to write. So please join us, 6.30 mountain time next Wednesday night. So Larry or, or uh, Karen, do you have anything else you want to say? Um, just uh, watch your email because we'll be sending out that registration link um, for the next webinar. And it is an excellent, excellent. Mike just has really thought about it and done some research and has some really great tips on things you can do to make your writing uh, really enticing and um, to today's readers. And so it's really excellent. And Larry, I was just on the edge of my seat. So really? thank you. That was really, really great information. Well, I loved it. And um, I'm sure that, that our other viewers did as well. But man, you guys, Mike, Larry, you guys did a great job. I loved it. Thank you. Thank right. you. And, thank you, everyone. And, you know, don't let, don't, don't let what I told, told you be too discouraging. Make your effort. I think it was encouraging. I think you really painted a clear path forward for people. So, so good stuff. All right. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next week then. Thank you very much. Bye.